little background lighting for a change. Um, I am Scott. Welcome to my channel. I am doing a series called the Decades of Action Challenge, and you are watching the latest installment. Um, this uh, series that I'm doing uh, is uh, based, uh, inspired by the Epic Film Challenge that uh, has been done by uh, Forker Ball and is continuing on with uh, Razor Wire Reviews. Um, it is about uh, basically me looking at a series of essays by a writer named Tom Brehan for avclub.com about the most important action movie of each year for the last 50 years, starting with Bullet with Steve McQueen in 1968. Um, Brehan's um, evaluating basically uh, each of these movies based on their cultural impact, their success, their critical regard, and other uh, uh, variables. Um, I'm on 2011, uh, which means that after this video, I'll only have five films left to go. 2012, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Sorry, actually six, because there's this year as well. You might pick something for this year. <clears throat> anyway. Fast Five. Fast Five, of course, is his pick for um, 2011. Um, Fast Five is the latest, um, well, was at that time, <laughs> the latest installment in the Fast and Furious uh, franchise, which I'm sure you're all quite familiar with, starting with the Fast and the Furious, which was also on Brehan's uh, list for 2001. Uh, went on to Too Fast, Too Furious, Fast and Furious with Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious, and then Fast Five became kind of like the Avengers of Fast and Furious a year before the Avengers movie came out because they got not only um, the main uh, people from the Fast and Furious to return, but also a whole bunch of supporting characters from the other movies. You had um, Tyrese and Ludacris, who were in the second one. You had Sung Kang, uh, who is in the um, uh, 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 Tokyo Drift uh, movie, set in Japan, of course. Um, and uh, then you had, uh, from Fast and Furious, Gal Gadot and two other guys whose names I don't know because they were only ever in Fast and Furious and Fast Five. Um, sorry about that. Um, Gal Gadot, of course, or sorry, Gal Gadot. I really, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Uh, played Wonder Woman uh, earlier this year. She's playing her again in Justice League. Um, and um, one thing that Justin Lin, the director... Uh, decided to do was uh, rewrite everyone's uh, personal history so that they are all expert in weapons and technology and combat and things like that, rather than just really good with cars. Uh, of course, you had Dominic Toretto, who's played by Vin Diesel, uh, and um, Brian something or other, Brian O'Connor, right? Former federal agent, now he is basically the, the opening sequence. He and Vin Diesel's sister... Uh, who he's in love with, uh, break out, no, not Vin Diesel's in love with her, Walker, Paul Walker's in love with her, Jordana Brewster, Jordana Brewster's character. They break him out of a prison bus and um, run off to Rio de Janeiro where they uh, have, uh, they get entangled up with the, um, the drug uh, 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 lord there, the uh, drug lord in the city, uh, who's played by uh, a guy named uh, Joaquim Alameda, I mean, Joaquim de Alameda. He was uh, the bad guy in Desperado, the Robert Rodriguez movie, and also Clear and Present Danger uh, with Harrison Ford um, in the 90s. <clears throat> very, very cool uh, uh, actor to play a villain because he's got this very deep, gravelly voice. He's, he's good. He's really good. Hmm. Another addition to the uh, cast, of course, is this was the first movie to uh, recruit Dwayne Johnson uh, into the uh, fold. Dwayne Johnson, uh, of course, plays a, a DEA agent. Um, in the opening set piece, um, Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, uh, they uh, are working with um, uh, a guy that they know in Mexico, I think, <clears throat> to uh, steal some high-priced cars. Um, it turns out one of them contains a microchip, which has all this drug cartel information on it. Why they don't just, like... You know, put it in an envelope and mail it somewhere. I don't know. It's being transported in a very, very fancy car. When they steal the car, they uh, come on the drug lord's radar. Anyway, um, so once that occurs, then, um, you know, a couple of DEA agents get killed by the bad guys. Um, not Vin Diesel and Paul Walker's fault, but they get blamed for it. And so this guy, Hobbs, he goes to Rio with his squad, uh, Hobbs being the Dwayne Johnson character, to track them down. Uh, and is a very determined, kind of reminds me of um, 
the Russell Crowe character in Les Miserables. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, whether these guys are good or bad. He's, you know, you know, he's going to bring them in no matter what. No, no, no. Actually, Brehan compared him to like Tommy Lee Jones and the Fugitive, except way more jacked. <laughs> Brehan's like, this is the first guy to leave the professional wrestling and then get more jacked after that. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's, he's got some good moments. He's got some of the best lines in the movie. My particular favorite being when he's talking about uh, doing surveillance on a, on a businessman. He says, every time this guy goes to the bathroom, I want to know how, t how many times he shakes it. That's, that's just one of the best lines ever. Um, so, what's interesting about this movie is that the, uh, the the sort of the objective changes a lot. It starts with them just basically wanting to steal cars for some extra money, but when they um, get attacked by this um, uh, cartel guy, uh, they end up going on the offensive and um, figuring out where he keeps all of his cash for his illegal business, uh, the drug, drug distribution, and then figuring out how to uh, steal it. Um, but their plan takes on a lot of different forms and changes a lot throughout the uh, course of the film. They figure if they can steal the vault with all the money in it, you know, they'll be set. They can just disappear. However, the vault is located within the Rio de Janeiro police headquarters, uh, which is guarded, you know, by cops. And so they've got to figure out. They go through a number of different uh, uh, um, versions of the plan before finally deciding, hey, we'll just, you know, ram through the wall and hook up the uh, cables to our cars and drag this 10 ton vault which is full of money, you know, packs of money, <clears throat> through the streets and get away like that, right? Sure, okay. Um, it's uh, no secret that these movies play fast and loose with the laws of physics, um, but <clears throat> that didn't bother me so much as w the fact that they just had very little regard for all the bystanders in this movie. Um, it's impossible for me to believe that they drag this safe through the streets, smashing cars and into buildings all the way, and no innocent bystanders got hurt. Um, they uh, they were talking about how you know the drug guy, the uh, drug lord's uh, an exploiter of all the people of Rio <clears throat> and everything like that, and we need to you know cut his legs out from under him. Um, but do they you know? give any of this, you know, millions of dollars to the people? No, they, they keep it for themselves. They give it away to some people that they actually know in person. Um, uh, and also there's some cold-blooded killing on, on the part of the heroes, and it's just that they act incredibly recklessly. Of course, you have an action movie like this with crowd-pleasing set pieces. You know, um, innocent bystanders just become sort of an afterthought, you know, and um, <clears throat> whether they're <clears throat> blowing up a train you know, or uh, or uh, smashing up a bunch of cars by swinging a safe that they're dragging along through the streets as it crashes into one row of parked cars after another. Nobody, apparently we're supposed to believe nobody is actually getting hurt here, um, which is uh, a little stupid, a little stupid, and it, kind of hard for me to really buy into. Um, the sixth movie... Uh, avoids this rather neatly, um, and so I prefer that. I prefer that one. It's my favorite of the series. Um, I uh, would be a real hypocrite if I expressed a lot of disdain for the series as a whole, because I've gone to see movies five through eight in the theater. I've seen them in the theater, and when they do nine, I'll probably see that one too, um, because I'm always eager for a really, really great set piece, and I want to experience it on the big screen. Um, and I didn't, um, you know... I'm not, like, a fan of the series, but I have gone to see them, so I'm, I, I'm not going to go, these movies suck, because some of them are fun. Um, five, however, despite the fact that Brehan likes it the best out of the series, and most people, if you ask them, will go, what's the best Fast and Furious movie? They'll probably say Fast Five. Um, it's not mine, um, because there's, you know, some serious things that the heroes do wrong in this movie uh, that I'm just not cool with. <clears throat> um, Elsa Pataki is also in this movie. Um, forgot to mention her. Uh, she is Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth's uh, wife in real life. She uh, did a doubling for Natalie Portman, the second Thor movie, uh, on occasion. And um, she is a cop, basically, in Rio, who is fresh out of the academy. And Hobbs recruits her because she hasn't had the opportunity to be corrupted and be bought by uh, the criminals to look the other way and such. Which is kind of funny because in uh, the sixth movie... He recruits another woman to join his team, and it's like the exact opposite. She's definitely corrupt. She's definitely working for the bad guys. So it's just like, um, I really like, 
you know, a lot of the set pieces in six. That's why I bring it up. <clears throat> Gina Carano from Haywire. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, and she was in um, Deadpool as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, um, like I said, there's, um, there's, there's stuff to admire about this movie. The whole sort of family dynamic that Vin Diesel keeps pushing in every movie, at least his character does, and I think he does in real life, um, that um, is sort of brought about by the fact that uh, Mia, the Jordana Brewster character, is with Paul Walker, finds out she's pregnant, uh, and so, you know, in that moment right there, once the two of them find out, they're like, we're not just, we're not just friends who work together. We're, we're, we're a family now, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be that kid's uncle, which means that you and I are, are connected for life. Um, and, uh, and so that generates a lot of warm feelings when they sort of focus on that. One of my favorite, my, probably my favorite scene in the whole movie is the one where, um, after Paul Walker and Vin Diesel and two of the other guys, I think it's Tyrese and, uh, Han. <clears throat> Han, by the way, his name is Solo, <laughs> only it's spelled Seoul as in the city in South Korea, Seoul, right? Seoul-O, Han Solo, that's hilarious, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, the four of them, they have a race, and they decide to bet a million dollars each of the money that they plan on stealing. So Paul Walker wins, um, but the other two guys say, nah, Vin Diesel let you win, you know? <laughs> probably as a gift, uh, you know, as like a, a, a gift because you're going to be the new daddy and everything like that. And so Paul Walker goes to Vin Diesel and he's like, so this is like a baby gift or something like that? And Vin Diesel has this huge grin on his face and he's like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Ah, so sweet. So, such a sweet uh, gesture on his part. Um, uh, so yeah, um, the whole group of them, you know, they work really well together. They're always giving each other a hard time, taking each other down. Uh, Tyrese and Ludacris, they made that like their thing for the next uh, several movies where they're always just like, you know, uh, 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 ribbing each other all the time. It's, it's great. It's really, really fun. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, you got Gal Gadot and, and, um, and uh, Sung Kang, uh, who uh, they, they have a little flirtation going on. Um, which means that the uh, third one actually takes place after um, the six. Right, yeah, it takes place between six and seven. Um, so, you know, as long as that's in place, then the timeline is just fine, and we won't have any uh, paradoxes with uh, Wolverine and Rogue or anything like that. <clears throat> anyway, uh, going on for a while about a movie that I'm not really a big fan of. Uh, I apologize for that. Sorry for taking up your, too much of your time. Um, but, uh, again, I'm watching each one of these movies and making a video about it. That is my little series, uh, which will be wrapping up in December. Um, like I said, I've got six left to go, um, starting with uh, next week, 2012. That will be The Raid Redemption. After that, it is um, um, Snowpiercer, and then John Wick. That's 2014. And then we'll have the selections for 2015, 16, and 17, and that will be the end of it. And I will make videos on those once I find out what they are. If you'd like to see any more of these videos that I'm doing for this series, the link to the playlist is in the description below, uh, as is my Facebook page. Uh, thank you again very much for watching, um, and uh, I will uh, see you next time. Appreciate it.